Uh, okay, thank you very much you. for a very kind uh, introduction. Uh, Sabadi Prab. And uh, so I, I'm very happy to share and share our issues and um, our ideas so, uh, with you. So um, on learning analytics and the MOOCs. So um, this is uh, just so interim report. So uh, I, I should say at the beginning, so I have no solution at the moment. So just to introduce our issues and our ideas. Okay, so um, so I will uh, show you a, a couple of uh, use cases from now. So um, why uh, do we uh, should we use uh, learning analytics? So uh, so uh, we consider a couple of uh, possibilities. So uh, one of so we consider learning analytics can be a very strong tool to improvement uh, improve uh, MOOC quality. So, um, so this is uh, our the current stance. A uh, current stance means so I'm working for uh, Open University of Japan, and also I am a deputy and secretary general of JMOOC also. So uh, this is a current um, my, our st standpoint. So um, even in 2014, so somebody people a MOOC, MOOC is over. Um, maybe you remember in North America, uh, but we are still uh, consider uh, MOOC is um, uh, not only a scalable uh, learning management systems, uh, so a total solution to realize openness and quality assurance at once in sustainable way using technologies. But on um, many uh, previous presentation mentioned, still um, MOOCs uh, detention rate is low. So maybe between five or 20%. So most of people drop out. So, um, as you, so maybe uh, if you as administrator of online course providers, so 80% drop out rate. Such kind of a system can be used for regular, regular so course management. So uh, we are still need innovation to, in, uh, to improve the quality of the MOOCs. So in our case uh, in Japan, so 2013, uh, the past year of the MOOC in Japan, so we are going to the JMOOC in this year. And this is one of the characteristics of JMOOC. So um, I, I mentioned uh, last year also, so we have uh, four platforms. So me, so most of the uh, MOOC pro providers only, uh, use only one platform, but the JMOOC has uh, four platforms, and user, in this mean, uh, user means a uh, course content provider can choose uh, platforms. So uh, we are uh, different uh, categories, platform providers and course providers. Platform providers is uh, this, com this company, corporate. And the course provider is mainly university or something. And our university is also, um, oh sorry, uh, our university also provide one of the JMOOC platforms, uh, or UJ type platforms. Uh, uh, like that, so I will show um, this platform's architecture as an example. So um, this platform is um, the, the overlapped area. We focusing, focused this overlapped area. So uh, we use uh, that uh, LMS, uh, but uh, at the same time, so we deliver the content uh, using uh, EPUB3 packaging. And also uh, we use uh, social uh, uh, networking services like Facebook or uh, mm, Facebook. And more. And uh, um, so, so we launched this uh, platform in 2013. At that time, our university has uh, uh, have no, uh, did not give us the money. So 
and we have a very little budget. So uh, we can uh, develop, we cannot use uh, very expensive learning management systems, or so uh, we developed uh, uh, learning management system from the scratch. So uh, we use um, mashup technologies. And so um, I used uh, uh, Moodles as uh, learning management systems and better for um, home page or information, uh, so, um, so uh, sharing using Facebook. And also uh, we, we have uh, many video materials, but uh, we use uh, um, uh, YouTube. And also um, the end of the each lesson and the end of the course, uh, we issue the digital badge, but uh, <coughs> we use modular open badge at that time. And <coughs> but anyway, so um, uh, so uh, we have um, already eight class eight classes in just two years, and the total about five thousand. Uh, sorry, five thousand. 5,000 registrant. No. Uh, okay, so um, 5,000 registrant. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so, a total 5,000 registrant. But only uh, 262 uh, so registrant can finish. So retention rate is uh, only 5.2%. Five, 5 so um, so we, uh, we invest this course uh, uh, huge budget and also using competency uh, model or in, any other kind of the so, uh, good, good point. So, uh, embedded in the course, but um, unfortunately uh, retention rate is 5.2%. So um, recently, the most of the MOOCs um, such kind of retention rate between 5 or 20%. The Korean case uh, in previous uh, presentation, they say 24%. Uh, we have uh, also an ex extraordinary uh, high retention rate course we have, but uh, it, Still, ten, twenty between twenty or thirty percent. But, um, uh, but uh, uh, as you know, so um, in two thousand fourteen, so uh, um, some people say MOOC is over. But uh, still, in this this year, two thousand seventeen, so um, many MOOCs is still. Uh, uh, arrive and to especially in developing countries a new a regional uh, MOOC consortium is launched so um, but in maybe most of uh, us uh, agreed so as the the, the dust line so as a delivery system to high quality learning content maybe MOOC is uh, nearly perfect but um, the systems for education, uh, they still have uh, many uh, problems. <coughs> so, um, so the current move is the uh, problems. So high dropout rate, the so low retention rate. So um, to clear, and also uh, we also recognize the current MOOC platforms are less uh, learner support. So con uh, comparing with our case, uh, our university, um, distance university, so we have a proprietary online course, but con comparing with our own, so Spoke, uh, small private online course, so such kind of learner support function is still weak. So we consider, so, um, so, but um, as you know, so a uh, MOOC should so um, uh, should be a large scale education. So, um, but uh, we we 
the same time, we should consider sustainability. So it means we should ask uh, machines to uh, um, take a role in this kind of the, uh, learner support functions. So, but re to realize such kind of learner support functions, we need some analytic, analytics tools uh, of each learning processes uh, using learning uh, analytics technique. So I skipped this slide, sorry. So um, to, to realize such kind of evidence-based instructions, so um, uh, this is a uh, viewpoint from uh, teachers or uh, instructional designer or course content developers. So, um, so we asked to be uh, evidence-based instructions. But, um, but we need evidence or data. So to improve the course modules and to improve the learner support, we need such kind of evidence. So may I believe learning analytics can be uh, a very strong tool to realize such kind of functions. And the current roadblocks, in technical side, uh, we have uh, still many um, uh, uh, deficit in quality of the data in uh, learning record store. As some people say learning activity store. And operation side, so even in our university also, we have not reached to agreement on data collection and usage among stand stakeholders. Uh, stakeholders means teacher, student, the administrators. <coughs> The second case, personalization. So um, our, in our uh, MOOCs, so for example, so this is a Japanese um, beginner's class. So we implement this, this, this course uh, in Bhutan University's course. So in this process, we need some kind of localization. But um, the currently, so uh, um, the improvement of the MOOCs quality means, so the ECO, in some, in, on the some standpoint, ECO to realize personalization of courses or the tools. So, uh, so personalization means customization in each learners, in each learner. So to realize such kind of personalizations, uh, so we should detect the weak point of each learners using learning analytics uh, technology. And also, um, maybe the machines about artificial intelligence, some kind of uh, optimization. But, the, um, but to realize such kind of the, so customization of the each course, so we need many, many kind of the materials, materials courses. So um, only learning analytics uh, uh, cannot realize such kind of personalization. To realize such kind of optimization with each learners, we need materials repositories. <coughs> but um, we have a, a, a this kind of the materials repositories ideas um, have uh, already so got uh, about 10, 10 years and, uh, before. And uh, now we are, um, we are some, so fundamental technology we have already so have had. So, and this is a two aspect. Uh, so to realize adaptive learning process. So before localization, but now the level is uh, go ahead one, one more step, personalization. And not in each region or each language, now in each learner. And to the development side, so uh, we need this kind of the uh, materials repositories. 
So uh, our budget, uh, our resources are very limited. So we need the use or sharing of quality materials. So, um, so we also expect in this context, we can share this kind of materials, of course, uh, beyond the institutions. So, but what kind of the materials is better for this in each learners? We need this kind of the learning analytics technologies. So, um, uh, this is uh, our repository systems metadata. We have already some container for so, uh, metadata items for to describe such kind of the uh, characteristics of the materials. But uh, we have uh, no ideas how to describe such kind of information. But from now, maybe we should start such kind of the discussion. And we also, uh, so this is a, a metadata repository systems. We have already finished uh, this kind of the uh, global harvesting systems. So uh, each country have this kind of central repository for metadata but we can share that kind of metadata all over the world. So using this framework, we can share and reuse uh, of the uh, location information. Uh, so uh, um, may, may be possible, uh, I don't know. So um, we need uh, a different kind of levels, so uh, we need a customization. In the third case, <coughs> uh, resource management. And MOOC showed uh, new styles of education learning. A typical of uh, this kind of the styles uh, blended approach, so um, flipped classrooms. So uh, in flipped classroom, as you know, the knowledge transfer will um, uh, help in so um, before coming classroom so in online course the problem is how to pay the develop of this kind of the online course but now uh, using the MOOC uh, we can so um, in the deed MOOC we uh, uh, can be trusted so we can use uh, MOOCs as a knowledge transfer uh, phase. So using flipped classrooms, each university or each teachers can concentrate their resources into face-to-face -face mode knowledge integration. So this is a, maybe administrator by university president should choose. So as so he or a high university should be still keep the position of a content provider or using other university or other MOOC providers content and the university concentrate in face-to-face -face mode classroom teaching. So uh, we are now uh, uh, to, um, can uh, make the decision, the selection in this kind of uh, resource management. But to realize such kind of, to, to president, administrator have right decisions, we need learning analytics. So, so this is the uh, first one. <coughs> and, uh, maybe I have, what happened? Uh, I skipped, sorry. Mm, and <coughs> ah, yeah, I, and, mm, and me, you know very well MOOC and also uh, spoke uh, so MOOC and a small private online course so in our university as a um, distance university we provide regular course as a spoke. But at the same time, as a JMOOC members, we uh, provide, uh, the number is very limited, uh, MOOCs to the public. 
But now, especially the emergence of cloud computing environment, we need not, we can use both systems for both Moon and Spox. So, uh, so we can, the same, same platforms can uh, Spox and Moon. So just only uh, decide to check the um, access, access control. So, <coughs> so um, recently, so uh, after the so emergence of cloud, cloud computing, so uh, many people are considered what is the next of learning management systems. So as you know, so LMS architecture is a little bit old fashioned because uh, this, uh, this is the first so appeared in the, the end of the last century. But the sequential control, and, and the basic architecture, the sequential control of the component is uh, not changed. But many people now consider we should consider the new next generation of the digital learning environment. Uh, this is a report of EDUCOS. Uh, EDUCOS is the North American uh, C uh, academic CIO and IT centers people's organization, a very big organization. And uh, IMS Global, this is the one of the international standard bodies on Iran. Uh, just so propose this kind of ideas. So in this energy DRE, next generation digital learning environment, so um, they, they have uh, five goals. So I cannot uh, explain the details, interoperabilities, uh, and in integration to ERI eco ecosystems, and personalization I mentioned, and analytics, advising, recommendation, and learning assessment, and collaboration, such as social networking services, and accessibility and universal design are also very important. So, um, so we are now moving the next generation of the running, um, digital running environment. <coughs> so what should we consider the MOOC? Did we consider um, at the beginning of the MOOC in 2012 or or 13th, uh, MOOC will, may will be replaced with conventional higher education. But uh, five years passed, so we have never believed such kind of the, uh, situation. But we just recognize, so, uh, but we are now in the midst of the big wave transforming higher education in more broader Sense. So a MOOC is the just aspect of this kind of big wave. And uh, EDUCOS and IMS say such kind of movement outcomes are next generation digital learning environment. So uh, we, we consider MOOC is a very convenient test bed for such kind of the new technologies we consider. <coughs> and lastly, uh, this is the learning analytics just ask us to um, to uh, a, a kind of the paradigm shift in learning science. So uh, this is a very famous uh, data scientist in Japan, Kitagawa, Professor Kitagawa. And they classified four scientific approach, so uh, deductive, inductive, and who, uh, who do such kind of the study. So um, 20 centuries, that was humans, human science. But now, machines, computers. So a computational science, so that the theoretical science and empiric, empiric science is the 20th century. 
But uh, uh, the end of, from the end of the 20th century, computation, computational science ap appeared, and now data science. So methodology were the, uh, very, very different. So, um, so I also, uh, uh, so I ran, running the psychology in the college, so hypothetical testing, so uh, based on experimental design we run. So uh, the data, these kind of the experimental observations, high precision, well structured, and high quality data. But we cannot imagine the use uh, except follow up studies. But we can uh, very easily get big data now. What uh, big data means large scale data uh, which are generated from various sensors. Um, sensors is metaphors, for example, um, log, log data of learning management system is uh, also uh, output of the LMS various functions sensors. But anyway, uh, so, uh, but uh, this big data has a very different from uh, previous data. So, um, uh, one of the characteristics you, you, you must to know sparse, not structured, many uh, deficit in the cells. <coughs> But uh, anyway, so um, we, we are now, uh, uh, learning analytics studies uh, asked us this, these kind of the, uh, show the, these kind of the possibilities. <coughs> uh, sorry, I have only three minutes. <laughs> so I will just, uh, just eat of the items. So um, we should, um, so our experience, we should very carefully separate metrics and analytics. So it means uh, we are now in various sensors in our systems, LVMS, library management system, student information system, using smartphone, there are many kind of sensors inside. Recently, we can detect the brain activity very easily. So EC project, so um, every student to take such kind of uh, brain activity sensors and so um, to take, taking the activities in the classroom of a project with this to run. So, um, so this kind of the metrics, metrics and analytics, we should divide. And also uh, learning log data. And educational big data, we also should discriminate. The first one is the learning process data. So in LMS management, so every trial and every lesson, uh, LMS, so uh, up to put this kind of data. But this kind of data and big data, such as demographic data or uh, the data in uh, personal data in student information system are very different. So uh, we should uh, divide this kind of data. So scalability, anomalization, spatial and temporal structure, very different. So we cannot uh, match. Uh, if we analyze this kind of data together, we should be very careful. <coughs> and holistic observation. So we can take and, um, various and, uh, different level of the activity at the same time brain activity, cytosomatic response, and clickable data, speech, uh, any kind of the feedback, response, uh, reactions, we can detect the same time in different time scale at once. So this kind of spatial temporal structure of the learning activities, very complicated. Mm. And um, learning policy is very important, but I will skip. But um, the, um, the consensus formation uh, building process is very important to implement 
such kind, joining analytics theories. So um, uh, many organizations just uh, taking this kind of point. And um, milk me the test of it, I skipped. And IM standard can be used this kind of the learning analytics research. The point is uh, we have now many kind of database in each institution. Student information system, learning management system, content management systems, and library uh, management systems, uh, federated identification systems, so many. But we are now uh, the silo database. Uh, so we use these kind of systems independently. So, so we should use link to data. So um, uh, IMS standard can be used to make uh, our data in as a link to data. So um, I should finish my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Sorry, too much. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs>